Hello everyone and welcome to the Maritime Transport Webinar. Today we will introduce to the amazing world of blue economy. If you wonder what brought us together in front of you today, I will confess that uh, the Iceland, Norway and the Liechtenstein uh, through the EA and the Norway Grants Fund for Youth Employment uh, chose to invest uh, in the Blue uh, Generation Project. The Blue Generation Project is implemented by an international consortium of uh, 12 institutions with the scope of guiding young people to pursue a sustainable career in one of the blue economy sectors, naming, naming um, ocean, ocean energy, coastal tourism, aquaculture, marine biotechnology, shipbuilding, fisheries, and last but not least, maritime transport. As partner from Constanza, Romania, our association, Team for Excellence, uh, initiated this meeting with uh, distinguished guests to present uh, to you uh, career and uh, training opportunities around the world in maritime transport. Before uh, giving the floor to our guests, I would like to thank to our associate partner, Constanza Maritime University, for being our host today and uh, for offering uh, us this um, simulator, this navigation simulator, to introduce you the onboard ship's reality. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for accepting our invitation, for uh, sharing a little bit from your high relevant experience. Um, Mr. Professor Costa Sanka, the Dean of uh, Faculty of Navigation and Naval Transport here at uh, Constanza American University. You have a very interesting career path uh, from back officer to professor, also general manager at the uh, Maritime Ports uh, Administration Constanza, and also the Dean of uh, Navigation, uh, Faculty of Navigation here uh, at this university. Uh, please share with us so what is your experience, what can you tell us about your experience, why did you choose this career, and maybe what motivated you to become a professor? Thank you for, that, for the invitation. Uh, I always uh, was connected uh, with the blue economy, the same, especially with the maritime transports, because I, I graduated in maritime university. After that, I started my career at sea as tech officer. But for me, it was interesting also to 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 come back at the university, starting from the, the first level again, from assistant, and uh, after that, uh, making all the steps up to the highest one, which is the professor level. And uh, from the administrative point of view, uh, I'm uh, dean of the faculty as you just mentioned. And during this time also I had the opportunity to be general manager of the Port of Constanza uh, in 2019-2020, periods with uh, more challenges than we expected as we all of us know that uh, was the period which is not completely finished but that was the starting of the, the period of the COVID pandemic uh, problems and periods and after that of course new challenges came in the uh, Black Sea with the, the situation in Ukraine so the, the focus on the maritime field and the, the, role, the role of constant support was again highlighted. Uh, why I, I chose this? Uh, I was, uh, of course, I, I was born in this area and I was always uh, connected with the sea and uh, I considered that uh, to have a career at sea is very interesting. Uh, it's giving me the possibility to have a, a challenging job to, to to be able to move big quantities of cargo from one point to the other. Of course, it's giving the possibility to see different cultures from different countries and uh, to learn every day because this is a, a very dynamic sector with the maritime transport. Uh, as, you, as you know, the ships are 
are uh, changing every day and uh, the technological level, level uh, on board is high and is higher and higher. So I, I found it as a very interesting area and uh, I decided to, to follow all the steps as I just mentioned in connection with that. So uh, it's very interesting even if you, you decide to have a, a career on shore uh, or to, be, to work at sea. I, I think it's very interesting and something more, talking about the gear economy again, I think this is a, a very dynamic area, so the, the, the potential of development of the blue activities you mentioned in, in the beginning of uh, our discussion is very high and especially for us in the area, uh, in the Black Sea area, where is a, a huge potential for development. Uh, it is uh, uh, Good, uh, good option to choose a maritime plan. Thank you so much, Mr. Kostelstanka. Well, we go forward and uh, we have with us uh, also uh, uh, Rosana Yanku. Rosana Yanku is a deck officer and uh, she's a member of the Women International Shipping and Trading Association. Tell us, Roxana, why did you choose this career, especially because you are a woman, mm -hmm. and why did you choose WISTA? It was definitely not my plan choosing this career because I'm not from Constance, as our professor said. I, I didn't belong to the sea, let's say, from the beginning. But uh, I wanted something different, something challenging, something that would make me wake up every day in a different office, let's say, in another destination, in another environment. So uh, I decided that uh, the maritime industry is perfect for me, not just because I'm uh, an adventurous girl, but just because I like to discover, to uh, put my uh, fingerprint on the maritime transportation nowadays. Uh, considering the, the WISA Association, I was recruited, let's say, <laughs> during a competition, or I don't remember exactly, last year. And uh, I spoke about the women's rights in the maritime industry and why we are so important. We are such an amazing element to this uh, industry and um, our professor Christina Rodomi just contacted me and she said that uh, I will be a valuable addition to the, to the Vista Association. So uh, I'm so proud to be part of this. Uh, we developed a lot of activities, a lot of um, webinars and uh, courses and trainings and uh, I'd like to continue on this path to be part of this association and to continue with my studies because I just uh, finished my uh, uh, studies in the uh, Faculty of Navigation and Transport and next year I will have my master's degree. And uh, yeah, it's a career that uh, I will not forget at all. I love it so much <laughs> and I would like to, to do this for my entire life. Thank you so much, Roxana. Uh, we are also very glad to have uh, with us uh, Mr. Christian Kuta. Mr. Christian Kuta is the inspector at the Romanian Naval Authority. Uh, you have saved a lot of uh, time, uh, a long period of time, and uh, you also have uh, experience as an uh, employer uh, because you have made the uh, import operator. And you also have experience uh, as part of the uh, Naval Authority. And I think you have a lot to say to us. And I will ask you why did you choose this career and uh, what is your background in maritime transport? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for, for your invitation. <coughs> uh, like uh, my friend Costel, I also started my career with, uh, on the board of ships, like the uh, deck officer. After that, I started a new career in the port of Constanza as uh, I used to manage one of the important and historic uh, port operator for uh, many years and uh, finally I am now in the Romanian Naval Authority where I lead a compartment uh, involving uh, safety and navigation. Uh, yes, I can say that I have uh, experience in the in, the, in this sector of maritime transport. Uh, what to say about the sector? Uh, I am now deeply involved in the uh, safety of navigation matters. 
and I, and I can say that uh, the maritime transport is uh, very regulated, sometimes too regulated, and uh, that means that all the actors which are involved in this uh, theater of uh, operations in the maritime field have to be all the time uh, updated. Uh, it's a dynamic sector. The challenge is a challenge to work in this sector because uh, all the time something uh, new appears. And uh, I strongly advise uh, young people to, to choose this sector, even if they choose to be officers on ships or uh, in the operational uh, sector in the port which is, uh, of course, very dynamic, especially in this period. You know, uh, the Romanian ports, there is uh, increasing uh, activity. And, uh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very happy that uh, we can get information uh, from many points of view, from the employer, from the employee, and also from the uh, training sector. Uh, now, if you allow me, I will uh, want to go further and uh, to um, address three main topics of this webinar. And uh, first, we will start with uh, the employment opportunities uh, in the maritime transport sector locally and also at the European Union level. Do you want to have a word about it? Mr. Stanka, if you... This sector, as we just mentioned about the, the potential of development, offers uh, a, a large number of jobs, uh, even if they are uh, on board uh, ships at sea, but also for the, for the onshore activities. Uh, as, per, as probably you know, uh, at, at each five years, uh, there is a study uh, published by BIMCO together by SF regarding the, the needs of officers on boards. And uh, if you look at that study, you see that it's a, it's a high level of, uh, of uh, market requests for well-qualified officers. Uh, and not only officers, but okay for, for crew members, let say. And, uh, why is that? Because uh, the, the, if you look at figures, uh, you see that the number of ships and the, the, the total tonnage uh, is uh, also uh, also increased. So it's uh, an area where uh, again and again we'll have good offers. If also salaries are very good, and that makes the very the, the area very interesting. Interesting for future careers, but uh, if you look also at the uh, at the ports, you'll see that uh, being a, a normal point for the multimodal transports, you'll see that uh, around the ports are uh, a large number of companies connected with the maritime transport. As an example, for instance. Uh, uh, Looking back to my, my experience in Port of Constanza, I, I can tell you that uh, this port, uh, especially the maritime administration, signed more than 1,000 contracts with the companies involved in, uh, in uh, maritime transport activities. So, and of course, uh, if you can enlarge the picture, you can see that it's similar for all the big ports. Of course, if you look at the biggest ports in Europe, you see how dynamic is the activity and how large is the, the number of jobs offered by the industry and the connected activities like those uh, in logistics and so on. Mm -hmm. If I may, uh, regarding the dynamo and, and uh, dealing with this uh, selection part and uh, going, on, going on board, uh, two, three years ago when I started to, to sail, uh, it was quite difficult for us to find a job for women in the maritime industry. I don't know, maybe because of this uh, math times, uh, now it's easier and uh, a lot of girls are going very easily on board. The recruitment process is very 
soft and easy. Uh, but back then, it was really hard. Uh, we weren't taken into consideration. Now we are seen like people, as if we So um, a lot of jobs and opportunities, because uh, being on a passenger vessel, uh, we were the most affected by this uh, pandemic. And everything stopped for a minute. And uh, we tried to recover our jobs. A lot of companies went bankrupt. So what were the possibilities? We just stayed home for a little while. And now it's really a high demand for people, especially for women, because they uh, proved that during this pandemic they were also strong and uh, capable of uh, taking care of the, the ships. So uh, now for all the girls and women out there, it's really easy to find a lot of jobs. So the employers are eager to find whatever they can. Uh, we are very glad that uh, the times have changed and yes. that the role of women in the maritime industry also has changed. And uh, uh, I saw that uh, many uh, contributions uh, have been uh, conducted by uh, women. Yes. And uh, I think that it's very important to see that uh, women also can uh, have a, a big role in. Uh, not uh, only on the operational, but also in um, uh, managing the uh, uh, sector. Uh, Ms. Antutza, if you would like to speak from the point of view of an employer. Yes, I can ask uh, one, uh, one issue. It was, a, it was an item on the last, uh, I think, uh, Maritime Safety Committee on IMO. Uh, to in the goal is to increase the involvement of the woman in the shipping, uh, especially on, on, on board of the ships. Apart of the uh, career on, the, on board of the vessel, I can uh, tell that uh, like the officers, uh, which are uh, which. The career of the officer is very well, uh, let's say, professional arranged by uh, education, which is uh, made in a professional way in the maritime uh, university. Uh, also training, we have a specialized uh, center for training. Uh, all this uh, make the officer to go uh, without any problem on board of the merchant ships uh, all over the world. But uh, also in the port operation, or let's say in the maritime in the maritime field, uh, I think I want to point the importance of the to know the the legal framework because if the students learn the framework of the maritime transport, uh, for them the will be very useful to to be employed in. Uh, Port operations in uh, agencies or uh, in uh, connex activi activities related to the maritime transport. But from my experience, and, uh, I, I can tell you that uh, I know very well what happened in the in, in the port. Uh, I think there is a is a uh, very good advantage for the students with uh, which uh, has the background. Uh, especially in, to, to know very well not, not only the vessel but also the all the activities related to the vessel operations and uh, yes for the future I, I see uh, good opportunities for uh, all, the, all the students to to have uh, to, to get a job in Porto Constanza uh, apart from the on board of ships. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, I would like to add something, sorry. Uh, yes. uh, what is uh, talking about the job opportunity, which is uh, more, uh, also important to mention that the, the maritime transport is global. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, doesn't matter if you are Armenian or I don't know the nationality, you can work uh, anywhere. Uh, in Europe, but not only in Europe, because the competencies are similar, the, 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 the legal framework, as just was mentioned, as the, the 
Commission Data Normalization very well uh, established. So you are able to, when you graduate the Maritime University, for instance, you are able to work for uh, any ship owner for, uh, as well as for any, I don't know, porting owner or something related to that. And uh, that, of course, increased the, the opportunities. Okay, so uh, we see that uh, there is a high demand of uh, human resource in the sector, but what about the training? About the training opportunities in maritime sector, uh, yes, locally and at European Union level? For the training opportunities, you can, you can say that uh, let's say to, to, to get the competencies needed for the sector, there are two, two powerful ways to do it. One is uh, vocational, and you'll see that uh, a large number of jobs uh, similar to be on board or to be on shore, uh, may be performed by people uh, following the, the vocational power. We can say also that even for the, the officers on board, there is, it's not the case of Romania, but there is uh, such a possibility in some countries in Europe, like uh, in Greece, they, had, uh, they, they don't have uh, high education in the European uh, definition, let's say they have a, a kind of, what they call them, uh, as I know, uh, naval academies, but they have some schools specific for the, to be followed after the, the high school. But they, they have also a path just coming from, the say, starting from the uh, CIMA and the following the, the level of career up to the uh, ship captain, why not? And that is a practice also from some other countries like Turkey and Italy, I think. Uh, that, that is a way, but of course the, the, the other one, and the most used, let's say, uh, way is to follow the higher education in, uh, in maritime fields. Uh, you will see that all, all the countries uh, still have a very good uh, area covered by, by universities, specializations in this uh, part for this purpose. Of course, for the maritime transport, uh, due to the, the, the market, most, uh, let's say, most important of them are today uh, in East Europe. And uh, of course, uh, that is why uh, our university is considered one of the, the best universities, let's say. I'm not very modest with that, but this is uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. And uh, things like uh, being the, having the presidency of the International Maritime uh, Association for the Universities, or similar uh, activities, projects where the university was involved, is a kind of confirmation of that. And but of course, in all the countries, European countries, you see very strong universities and uh, people with experience at sea, and also in teaching young people, uh, very good. And uh, we have a very good backup in uh, in, in uh, developing the, the practical skills due to the very good connections with the with the ship owners. Uh, we have uh, signed protocols and partnerships with uh, the biggest, uh, the, all, all the biggest uh, shipping companies in the world. Of course, directly or through the, the main office they they have in Constanza and in the area, and that is similar for all the all the uh, maritime uh, universities. You will see that the, the, of course this is an area where the maritime transport is an area where the practical skills are very important. Of course, the, the international conventions requires uh, at least one year at sea, for instance, for the future officers as cadet. And uh, also the industry uh, give the help for that. But uh, this is uh, also increasing the, the opportunity to get those, to, to, uh, those competencies and uh, also to get a job because working, developing uh, skills on board or in, in companies, in the port or shore, uh, give the possibility for the employer to know you, to, to, to understand your capabilities, and of course the, the, the option to employ you are, are increasing again. Thank you so much. 
Roxana, what do you think about uh, the training opportunities from the point of view of a student? Because you yes. said you are still a student. Yes. What do you think about it? So, uh, for all of my fellow colleagues that were wondering, how will I get this uh, training? How will I be prepared to go on board? Because after you finish your studies and you are doing this basic training at the uh, for, uh, for your first step in this career, uh, I would say that it depends on the company because uh, I was lucky enough to be in a company that uh, paid for all my uh, trainings, and sent me uh, in uh, United Kingdom, let's say, kind of for uh, uh, training for the life that I would get at sea. So uh, you will be prepared and uh, modeled uh, from the company side. Uh, I have a lot of uh, colleagues that uh, they needed to uh, reach by themselves, to search and to look for a lot of uh, courses to take by themselves and they struggled because it was something new, it was a new domain. So uh, uh, I advise that they would ask from the beginning, uh, at every company they will uh, choose, uh, to ask about the trainings, the programs, uh, if they are providing some of these uh, practices for them to learn and because the best, uh, of course the best training is uh, the one that uh, you are doing to yourself, <laughs> learning and uh, trying to catch everything from everyone. So yeah, you can ask from the beginning and you will see after that. Thank you. So we see that uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, of training, but uh, what would say uh, not authority about the young people that enter this uh, this field. Uh, do you see they are uh, trained enough? They are ready enough to uh, make uh, something good in uh, their jobs, or they are? <coughs> yes, I cannot uh, show a statistic, but uh, usually the usually the students or the officers which. Uh, came to us for uh, examination where the authority which uh, do this thing uh, usually pass without problem the, the exam. Now this is the educational part because uh, key, uh, is the issue of uh, knowledge but uh, more important for the training is uh, on board of the ships. And uh, I think now there are more than 100 Doing uh, companies which uh, offer uh, all the time uh, possibilities for uh, for training. Uh, sometimes uh, the students have to to be more proactive. <laughs> let's say, not all the time. Uh, nobody come to to take and to ask. Uh, do you want to come with me? <laughs> we are not still there. And also, uh, also in the in the maritime. Uh, in the operational uh, area, in the port. Uh, port. There are large companies now, and uh, the economic uh, actors are, are not so small. And all the time there is a need for the, for the, for the people. And they, first they have to do some practice, and I, see, I know that the uh, university arrange every year to, to, make, uh, to make the practice for the, for the students. And uh, I know cases that uh, some students are, were offered to work uh, after this practice to work in the, in the port. And uh, also, I think this is the practice is the first stage, and the other, of course, every, every new, uh, new employee has to be trained by the specific of the work with the Execute in, in this area. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, ending, uh, I would like to ask you a question, uh, a piece of advice maybe. What would you tell someone who will want to follow a career in uh, maritime transport? I will want to start with Roxana because uh, she's the youngest one, younger one and uh, she can give an advice uh, to the young people the same age as you so yes. uh, I will summarize everything in one uh, word uh, shortcuts, do not take shortcuts 
projects in this industry. You need to learn it step by step because this career requires um, your uh, focus. It requires for you to stay on the line and to gather all the information you need. Uh, you cannot, or you can, but hard. You cannot succeed in this career if you are uh, running from uh, one company to one company to one company because uh, in many cases you will take it from the beginning. Uh, therefore, it is very important to focus, to choose wisely, and uh, to learn, and to uh, try to be the best version of yourself, and to keep straight on this path, and not look left, right, doesn't matter, because uh, people can do a lot of things, they can discourage you, I've, I've been in that phase, you're a woman, you cannot do it, uh, you will find it very difficult. Uh, and you just can say, yes, of course, you're right, but just keep straight, learn, be the best version of yourself, do not quit, and uh, keep it like this, you will see in time if there is a problem or not, you can solve it. Don't remember that you have friends, you have uh, professors to ask for help, uh, you have a place where to come back and to revise everything, so you will learn everything on board, it's not a problem that if you don't know something, it's always full of books, full of uh, officers around to ask. Just try to, uh, to remember that you're not alone, and you need to uh, focus, to study, and uh, to flourish. Thank you so much. Is it fun how we give you the last This my advice is to, to choose a career. <laughs> <laughs> Metropolitan transport area, and that is because, uh, as I, I mentioned before, this is in the first this is, this field is in the in the first line of economic development. Uh, maybe it looks like challenging, as uh, Roxana mentioned, it's in a, it's a field where you have to be to be good. <coughs> Sorry, and um, but. And then in the, in the first line of the development, you will have all the time enough support to do it. So, the, the universities are very well developed. <coughs> the, the, the economic actors are ready to help also for the practical competencies and so on. You see like, like uh, this project, there are many projects financed through European, <coughs> through European programs uh, and that is again a good help, a uh, possibility to increase training facilities, to increase uh, environment, uh, to improve the environment for, job, for the jobs. So it's a, it's a very good option and a lot of resources are coming to this area and that is why even if, again, it's, uh, it's uh, um, a field with a uh, uh, need for very strict uh, competencies, it's, uh, it's not so hard to, 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 to work in that because of the help and resources allowed for that. Thank you so much, Mr. Laputa. Just a piece of advice for young people. My advice for young people to I can strongly advise them to choose the maritime field first, not not exactly the career, because the career will follow uh, will po will can follow a path on a, on a track on a navigation or a commercial aspects or a regulatory like me now, uh, but the field is very vast, and uh, I think there will be a job for anyone who is well uh, educated, is well trained, uh, which, which gain a lot of uh, competence, skills, uh, and for everyone uh, will be a job in this, uh, in this sector. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, coming us today, thank you for sharing with us such interesting information. I'm sure that the audience will find it very helpful and very uh, interesting, important for their future careers maybe. Uh, thank you for following us today. And don't forget, we are here to guide you. So uh, contact us 
for mentoring, for uh, attending uh, new courses, new training courses that are available uh, free uh, online. And uh, register, of course, uh, the platform of the project uh, where you can uh, search uh, available uh, jobs uh, in, uh, blue, in the blue industry. Uh, also, don't forget to follow us also on social media. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Have you ever imagined yourself on board ships sailing and traveling around the world? Well, your dreams can come true. I am happy to be your guide for your first virtual voyage. My name is Nicoleta Hakomi. I am Vice Dean of Faculty of Navigation and mentor at Team for Excellence Association for the new generation of blue maritime professionals. My colleagues, overview, an ample overview of the maritime transport, training and employment opportunities. You learn that almost all goods, over 90% of the world trade, are moved by ships. Multiple companies, ships and professionals form a maritime ecosystem that works together to bring us most of what we need and use daily. From breakfast cereals to vehicles and even the latest IT gadgets. Now, I will show you few careers that you may consider for your future. No matter if you want to work on board vessels or import, the first step is training. With its opening to the Black Sea, Romania possesses several types of education for careers in the blue economy, from vet schools, post-secondary education, universities, training centers, and other employment companies in the economic field. If you are interested to become an electromechanical or electrical technician or CAD designer, to work in shipbuilding or in port operations, we invite you to have a look at the Maritime High School of Constanza. Here, theoretical subjects are fully complemented with the practical activities carried out on real site at port and maritime industry prayers to guide you and counsel you towards a successful career. If you want something more advanced, we invite you to study here at Constanza Merida University. You will find professionals and a modern establishment with navigation and engine simulators ready to introduce you in the real environment from onboard vessel. Upon completing the four-year courses, you will get the proper competencies and abilities to become a deck officer marine engineer or electrical engineer. Of course, this is only the start. You may want to continue your studies and get the highest position on board as captain or chief engineer. But, as I already mentioned, maritime transport is just a part of the entire logistic chain. You may want to follow a career ashore. The university provides adequate training for you to get a job in connecting sectors, freight forwarding, logistics, port operations, intermodal connections, warehouse and distribution. All of these are bringing variety, creating job opportunities and make careers in maritime transport very attractive. Of course, you can change your mind. With so many job opportunities, you may want to change your career path. It is possible. The university offers you short-term professional training courses, such as dynamic positioning and maintenance, maritime survey, or high-voltage courses that can open various career paths. 
if I raise your interest to get the training for working in the maritime transport sector, then let's start the engine to navigate in the real labor market. More than 30 national crewing companies approved by the Romanian National Authority and several crowdsourcing websites are constantly offering position on board and ashore for the international labor market. You can apply directly to them to get a job on commercial ships carrying general cargo, oil and chemical products, grain, cereals, roar of vessel and ferry boats. You may also want to work on passenger ships and service vessels for support activities such as pilot vessels, tugboats or icebreakers. Now, because we covered almost all relevant aspects for training and uh, employment opportunities, I want to share with you some facts. During my career as professor and uh, mentor for the new blue generation of maritime professionals, I asked hundreds of students how they would like to know and receive information about career. Not surprisingly, almost all of them said that they would like to hear and receive advices from professionals. Therefore, willing to offer relevant expert advices for the young generation, we asked the professionals. Trainer and owner of a crewing company explained the importance of treating education with much seriousness. Yeah, I, I would like to, uh, to tell them to uh, invest in their training, to try to learn as much as possible from the school, whatever school they are uh, attending, they are uh, graduating, and never treat the things uh, uh, without uh, seriousness, without uh, uh, putting a lot of work into it. Uh, so what I can tell them is to, uh, yeah, to try to get maximum as much as possible from their, their training, their learning uh, process, so that they can use it uh, when they come on, uh, on board the vessel for their uh, career. This is very important. The more uh, theoretical knowledge you have, the better for you to apply it on board uh, as a practical, uh, practical skill. Dan Dolgin, manager at a leading port operator in Romania, offers tips and tricks for starting a career ashore. We need, uh, we have a huge number, uh, large number, pretty large number of uh, crane operators. We have 18 crane operators because uh, we have eight, uh, four cranes, so we need at least four of them more per, per ship. So crane operators, we, so beside, beside the, the, the guys who are sweeping in the yard, we're asking, we, we're looking just for the uh, skilled, uh, the skilled uh, workforce. For the guys which are uh, working on the field, not, not the guys, okay, the guys who are uh, looking for them, they are uh, the guys who are uh, experienced in grains. For the uh, crane operators, they have to be uh, crane operators. They have auto authorization, special authorization for this. Uh, the guys which are working on the uh, machinery, with, with which were empty, I don't see on the, uh, the bobcats. Which this this machinery, this machinery is used to clean the barges. Also, they have uh, authorization. They are authorized to, to operate this kind of machine. Also, the operating room. They are basically uh, electrical engineer. Here ashore, Laurence Ivanov, deck officer and instructor, gave valuable advices for those wanting to upskill or reskill throughout professional path. You can start to make this faculty for four years. After these four years, you will do also the IMO courses, which is necessary to go in the type you choose. For example, for the oil and tank tanker, you need uh, also the familiarization and the advanced tanker courses. 
If you go in the passenger, you will need the low passenger. For the chemical, you need the advanced chemical courses. After you finish with these all courses, which is obligatory, you will go to the authority and you will give to take your license and you will be able to go on board as a deck officer first time. If none of the above satisfy your needs, then we are happy to announce that an international job search platform developed within an European consortium and co-financed by EEA and Norway Grants is giving you the chance to explore training and job opportunities worldwide.